Joining us now to talk more about sports and mental well-being is Dr. Jesse Steinfeld. He's a sports psychologist and associate professor at Indiana University. Dr. Steinfeld, thank you so much for joining us today. First up, as a sports psychologist, what is your reaction to Simone Biles' decision to drop out of competition yesterday? And what message is this sending to athletes and fans? I think that it's an unfortunate situation for her, given her elite status and desire to compete. I think it speaks to the level of difficulty that's happening that someone of that status would back out. Um, I don't want to speak directly about uh, Simone Biles specifically because I don't know what she's going through. But in a situation like this, um, Kevin Love's quote, everybody's going through something, I think is pretty apt for us to recognize that something's happening, something severe, something that's impeding her ability to perform. And we need to be uh, cognizant of that and recognize that. Well, you know, before Simone Biles, Naomi Osaka also stepped back from tennis competition to protect her well-being as well. Now, these are two young women making a huge decision like this. And my question is, do men handle stress of sports differently than women? I think men and women have been socialized to handle situations differently, but I think the stress of the sport is impacting both genders um, strongly. Um, we, you know, we teach athletes to compartmentalize and, and work on keeping the things in your, in your private life outside of the domain of performance, but that's a tall task. Um, right. you know, we've, seen a, we've seen an uptick in anxiety, particularly in high school athletes, uh, pre-COVID, right? COVID has exacerbated it. We've seen an uptick in anxiety uh, in terms of the pre pressure to perform, the pressures that are surrounding them. Uh, think about this, that an athlete's success and failures are public, right? And that's always been the case. Right now, that, that public nature, it's global, it's instantaneous, and it's permanent. Right? So there's a lot on these athletes' shoulders that, that they're facing that they have to deal with in order to perform. And you just mentioned COVID. COVID exacerbates that situation? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. We're, we're still seeing the data come out. But the, the preliminary data from the um, quarantine has shown a massive uptick in anxiety, depression uh, among college student athletes. Right, And these are elite athletes who are at the top of their, their physical performance. Um, but the COVID isolation, the uncertainty, and the loss of opportunity has impacted their negative, their, their mental health very negatively. And we don't know what that's going to look like over time, the right. residual impact that's going to have on this generation. Now, I want to go back. You know, you mentioned, um, you know, younger athletes. Um, what about, th that's something that really hits home with all of us here because, you know, we have uh, kids in middle, high school, and college levels, go, uh, athletes, and we, we push that. We love, to, uh, we love our kids to, to be involved in athletics, but they've got to deal with stress as far as that goes, too. What do parents look out for? How can parents and coaches help kids deal with the stresses of um, a sports yeah, it's a balance, right? So I have kids who are now college and high school athletes, and I want them to be resilient. I want them to perform under pressure and adversity. And I want them to you know, thrive under adverse conditions. But at the same time, I have to recognize that they're not robots, they're human beings, right? So if kids are having, young kids, particularly if they're having a sort of pushback, like I'd like not to have to do this, um, it's not a terrible thing, right? Don't extrapolate that to think my kid's gonna be a quitter the rest of his life. Recognize there's some times where they're gonna need to take a pause, take a break, because we've specialized and professionalized youth sport to the degree that it becomes almost burdensome yeah. and, and a little bit problematic so for kids. So what should parents and coaches look for? What symptoms um, should they look for to know that, you know, it's at that point where they need to take a step back or that they need to seek professional help? Yeah, so, so if, you, if your kid is sort of uh, actively withdrawing from activities that he or she used to really like to do or sort of avoiding wanting to go to practice or things like that, that's, that's a sign. doesn't mean immediately, you know, go get help, but be aware of that. Be, be uh, cognizant of that. Also, if they are um, acting out and having behavioral outbursts um, while they're performing, right, so if something goes wrong and then they are excessively crying or, or throwing things, um, that can be problematic when put in uh, combination with some of these other things. Okay. Dr. Jesse Steinfeld. Thank you so much for taking the time today to shed a little light on this because this is something that affects so very many of us, not just, you know, professional athletes on, on or, or, you know, athletes on the Olympic stage and professional athletes, but also our kids right here at home. So thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate it. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. All right.